Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24, uh, 23, beginning with verse 23. If you like to follow in the reading of God's Word, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that ye may put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for true holiness. Not some New Age movement, Lord, of trying to make ourselves better. Some New Age movement of trying to perfect the flesh which will never happen. But Lord, true holiness that must be through your power and your creation, what you create, Lord, your creative power. We ask that you bless, anoint as we minister your word, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. There's a lot to be said right there. Renewed in the spirit of your mind. This is regeneration. Are you listening? This is what Jesus was speaking of when he said to his disciples, Ye are they that have followed me in the regeneration. Amen? And in that same context, Jesus is dealing with the throne. Let's sit with him and judge in his throne being recreated. You understand, folks, what that means, to be recreated? Praise the Lord. That ye put on the new man, a new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Now, why would Paul the Apostle emphasize, or why would he make this distinct observation, true holiness? Why didn't he just say that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and holiness? Other places in the scripture speaks of just holiness. But here we see Paul the Apostle emphasize specifically. He's pinpointing something. He's dealing with something here. Not just New Age holiness. Not just man trying to perfect his flesh or trying to make himself better. What Paul is saying here is, There is something that is genuine. There's something that only God can do. There's something that is real. And it's called true holiness. Amen. We're hearing that word today being thrown around in the New Age movement. And when when I'm speaking of the New Age movement, folks, I'm not talking about those that don't know... um, Well, I shouldn't say they don't know because they don't know, but what I'm trying to say is I'm not speaking of the world in the sense that uh, they don't say they believe in Jesus. 
I'm speaking of those that one day Jesus is going to say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Those that will profess that they knew Jesus. Those that will profess and say, didn't we cast out devils in your name? Didn't we do all these wonderful things in your name? That's who I'm speaking of when I'm dealing with this subject of new age. Because how many know this NAR movement today, these false apostles, is the new age movement. Amen? Opening the door to Indians to bring in their gods, to bring in their demons, to bring in their spirits, folks. Are you listening? We're seeing a melding together today of everything becoming one. And the Bible calls that Babylon. Amen. But God says even his judgment, even his wrath is poured out without mixture. Amen. The world today is mixing everything. Mixing everything. Just mixing it all together. Amen. And they're not after a specific sound. Are you listening? They're looking for a new sound. Something they've never heard before. Something that is distinct and something that stands out from everybody else. But how many know? There's only one sound that is the sound coming from heaven. Amen? And that's what we see on the day of Pentecost. There came a sound from heaven of a rushing, mighty wind. Oh, listen, brothers and sisters. A rushing, mighty wind. Oh, hallelujah. A rushing, mighty wind. A sound. A distinct sound that came from heaven. Amen? There was a distinct sound that came out of the Holy of Holies when the high priest was ministering before God in the Holy of Holies. The bells and the pomegranates made a distinct sound. And in the New Testament, Paul the Apostle says there is a sound that's a counterfeit. It's tinkling cymbals and sounding brass. Cymbals. Isn't that interesting? All the music today is with drums and cymbals, tinkling cymbals and sounding brass. Listen to me. There's a distinct sound. Paul says, if the trumpet does not make that distinct sound, how will the people prepare themselves to the battle? Listen. The people in the Old Testament, Israel, would listen for a distinct sound. They knew the difference between the sound of the trumpet, of the gathering of God's people, and they knew the difference that when it was an alarm of war. They knew the difference distinctly. Amen. But how many know there is such a mixing today that most are not realizing? And I'm speaking of God's people are not realizing the hour we are in. Amen? To the degree that the church is going to sleep. Amen. But how many know the Scripture tells us we are to perfect holiness in the fear of God? And here we're reading that it's God that's creating in us true holiness. So we understand it's not something that we can do. Amen. This is a work 
of God. If you don't get anything out of this message, get this. It is a work of God. It's something that only God can do in the life of a surrendered believer. Amen. In the life of a surrendered believer, God can create. And let me go another step. Recreate. In you. Righteousness and true holiness. You see, when God works, man doesn't get the praise. Man does not get the glory. Amen? The glory is to God. Amen? It is His glory. It is His honor. Amen? How many in this hour are allowing God to work in them? It's a work of righteousness, of God's righteousness. It's a work that only God can do. To the praise of his glory, brothers and sisters. It's not to our glory or to what we have set as our goal or our uh, standard. How many know this is to the praise of his glory? This is to the praise of his glory. In other words, what God is pleased with, right? what God deems to be acceptable. Oh, listen, this is not about what you and I think is holy or what you and I think is perfect or what you and I think is righteousness. This is to the praise of his glory. This is to the praise of his glory. Amen. This is where God is the one God is the one that says, well done. This is where God is the one, not man, but God. This is not where you praise yourself. Amen. This is not where you say, I think I'm doing pretty good. I think I'm a pretty good person. Amen. This is about God. Like he said, as he endorsed Jesus Christ, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Amen. To the praise of his glory. We need to quit looking around and quit looking for the praise of men. Amen. We need to stop looking for praise. Amen. We need to quit looking for praise for ourselves and uh, trying to glorify ourselves, brothers and sisters. We need to get to the place to where we're more concerned about what God thinks, what God is saying about us than we're saying about ourselves or that anybody is saying about us. Amen. Jesus says, those that receive the praise of man cannot receive the praise that only comes from God. Let me ask you, whose praise are you looking for? Amen. Are you looking for the praise of men? Let me tell you this. If you're looking for the praise of men, you will be disappointed. You will be discouraged. Amen? You will be discouraged. You will be sadly disappointed. Especially if you get the praise of men and not the praise of God, not the acceptance of God. Jesus said, Beware when all men speak well of you. Did he not say that? Beware. When all men speak well of you. Yeah. A man can gain the whole world and lose his own soul. 
What has he profited if a man should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? You see those today that are so concerned about the fame, so concerned about what they look like or what people think about them. They're always concerned about their image. Amen? And they have no knowledge of God. None. They are without knowledge of God. In fact, they will not retain God in their knowledge. Is anybody listening? You and I should be looking up, straightening up, lifting up our head. Amen? Looking up for the praise of his glory. Looking up to the praise of his glory. Lord, are you pleased with my life? Are you pleased with me, Lord? Lord, is there somewhere where I'm falling short of your glory? For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Are we still falling short of his glory, brothers and sisters? Amen. Uh, I think you need to understand, we all need to understand, that man at his best, man at his best is vanity. Man at his best is vain. The best that man can do in the eyes of God, is an abomination. Think about that. When you look at all the accomplishments that man has in this world from the beginning, that was not to the praise of God's glory. Amen? Think about that. It must be to the praise of His glory. I feel the presence of the Lord to the praise of his glory. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24. I thought about those that verse. There it is again, the 24. I've been seeing that a lot lately. 24. The 24 elders. Take a look at, take a look at uh, Ephesians. or not Ephesians, it's uh, Psalms. Take a look at Psalm 148, 13. Psalm 148, verse 13. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone. Did you get that? His name alone is excellent. His glory is above the earth and above the heaven. His glory is above outside the universe, outside the heaven. His glory is above all, brothers and sisters. Glory to God. Feel the presence of the Lord. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 12. That we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ. Oh, praise God. And understand that this is the earnest. Ephesians 1.14, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Jesus said, when you begin to see these things coming to pass, look up, your redemption is drawing near, which is the earnest of our inheritance, the receiving of the Holy Ghost, 
If you've been filled with the Holy Ghost, you've received the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. The praise of his glory. Oh, I feel his presence, people. Oh, I feel his presence. Is God pleased with your life? Is he well pleased with your life? Amen. That should be our greatest aspiration. That should be our greatest goal. Is God pleased with my life. Is God pleased? Is that at the top of the list for your life? Is God pleased? Is my creator pleased with me? Amen. Who cares what man has to say? Is God pleased? Who cares what you think of yourself? Is God pleased? Amen? Is God pleased? What did we see in the life of Enoch? What was his testimony? That he pleased God. Enoch, he pleased God. Amen. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Get that. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. What does faith look like? For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. What does faith look like? Those that diligently seek him. Are you diligently seeking God? Are you diligently seeking the Lord? Hallelujah. Is there an earnest, an earnestness within you? A longing, a craving, that you might be to the praise of his glory, that God would look at your life and say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter in to the joy of the Lord. I feel his presence, people. Well done. My, I feel the presence of God. I really feel his presence. <laughs> I really feel his presence. Oh, praise you, Lord. Well done. Well done. My good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Now be thou ruler over many, over greater things. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus one glimpse of his dear face all sorrows will erase amen it's going to be worth it they that run in a race run all if you've ever committed yourself if you've ever put all into anything this is where you need to put it. 
everything, muster it all together, every bit of energy, strength, everything, all towards, is God pleased with my life? Is there somewhere where I'm falling short? I feel his presence, people. I'm going to say to you right now, if you're not putting everything into serving God, and I, I really sense this in my spirit, that there needs to be that direct pointy, that pointancy, that, that where your life is pointing your whole life in adoration is pointing to God. Lord, are you pleased with me? Lord, are you satisfied with my life? And it's not about altogether us in that sense of are we pleasing to God, but it's that treasure in the earthen vessel. God is redeeming that treasure. Amen? Have you so surrendered and yielded your life to where you are God's treasure chest? And that God is redeeming the treasure chest with the treasure. Amen? Christ in you, the hope. Of glory, the hope of glory. I can't seem to get away from this verse, from this phrase, to the praise of his glory. Say that. Say that, brothers and sisters. Say it out loud right where you are, to the praise of his glory. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. People may not be happy with you, and they probably won't be if your heart is to please God. You're going to be persecuted for righteousness. You're going to be hated of all men. You're going to be rejected, despised. Amen? But if God is smiling upon your life, if God is smiling down upon you, why does it matter? Why does it matter? If man rejects you, if everyone rejects you, and God receives you, why does it matter? Amen? Paul said, unknown. He says, I'm unknown. He says, but well known. He said, the more I love you, the more I'm not loved. Jesus said, though all you forsake me, he says, I'm not alone. The Father is with me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Do you sense the earnestness of this message, brothers and sisters? Do you sense the longing? Do you sense that sense of a longing in Brother Joseph's heart to be pleasing to the king, to be pleasing to the king of kings and the Lord of lords, to be so accepted? A life, not where you get to the end of your life like a rush limbo and maybe you're going out of this world and you receive a medal of honor that means nothing. Means nothing. Listen to me. We're talking about an incorruptible crown, brothers and sisters. I'm not talking about the praise of men. I'm talking about incorruptible crown to the praise of his glory, his majesty. Praise the Lord. We need to be looking up, straightening up. Our redemption is drawing near. God bless you.
Thank you for your support of Honest News Network. I've been born again.